Welcome to Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy here today with Howard Mooney and Steve Schumacher, and it is fire season uh, here. And uh, and Howard uh, Howard Mooney from the DNR, Minnesota DNR uh, Forestry, is here with me today. And Howard, not too long ago, we were standing among three foot snowbanks. I know uh, that at that point you said once these snowbanks are gone, the fire season starts. Yeah, uh, our winter has finally ended. It took a long time, and it's very late this year, but. Uh, we are into springtime now, and so we are in the fire season. As soon as the snow disappears, uh, we do start having grass fires because uh, the open areas and the grasslands dry out very quickly on the first warm, sunny day. All right, and uh, typically these uh, fires start uh, more often than not by humans. Yeah, most of our fires are caused by, by people, and the two main causes are uh, through either uh, brush pile burning or, or garbage burning, or through arson, or where people intentionally set a fire. All right, and uh, burning garbage is illegal, correct? Yes, burning garbage is illegal. It, it causes a lot of problems from the fire standpoint. Uh, we had a lot of serious fires last year, and we do every year from people burning garbage. We had one just the past week, or just a couple of days ago. Uh, same situation, people trying to burn their garbage. It gets into the dead grass, and we did... Uh, have a trailer house that got burnt from the grass fire uh, just a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it does jump. The fire does have a tendency to jump. Yes, it does. And, and again, if if you have uh, dead grass next to buildings or next to any property, uh, that stuff is going to catch on fire too. And it again, grass fires are are, are very uh, flammable. Uh, the grass catches easily, it burns very fast, especially if it's a windy day, and it's very difficult to put out. Uh, even if you have a garden hose, if it'll reach to where the fire is going, it, it, it's difficult. A it, uh, garden hose won't spray enough water quick enough if the fire is expanding rapidly. All right. But there are instances uh, during this time of year when people can burn or do burn, need to burn, and uh, they can get a permit. Yes. Uh, we just want people to practice some fire safety. Uh, just like in your home, we have fire safety week in the fall. Uh, there's things outdoors that are the same, same way to practice fire safety, and part of that is getting a burning permit. Uh, burn when it's safe. We usually restrict the permits to uh, evening burning, and because the weather is calmer then and the wind is, is calmer and it's just safer to burn at that time. And, and people do need a burning permit once the snow is gone uh, for doing any type of open burning of brush, leaves, and grass. All right. Uh, so, and you can get permits uh, on the DNR's website or by stopping yes. in at the DNR's office. Yes, they're uh, either we do have them online now. They do they do cost five dollars, and that permit is good for the the rest of the calendar year, and that's for burning. Uh, if you need to burn multiple times, it's a good way to do it. Uh, if you a brush pile or leaf pile or small areas of grass. Uh, and also through our uh, Township Fire Wardens or through our DNR office. All right, but there is also a restricted burning period too. Okay, and we do have some further restrictions uh, during the month of May here now. We will have restrictions on in uh, Becker and Ottertail counties and surrounding counties uh, where we will restrict the normal pile burning until we get green up, meaning the trees leaf out and the grass turns green. All right. I'm here with uh, Howard Mooney from the Minnesota DNR, and we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk also about restorative burning with Steve Schumacher from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Thanks, uh, Howard. Thank you, Carol. Thanks for having us today. Okay. We'll be back with more Hometown Happenings after this. Welcome back to Hometown Happenings. Carol McCarthy here uh, with uh, Steve Schumacher from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Of course, we're talking about it is a burn season, wildfire season, but uh, fire is used uh, to restore habitat here with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And Steve, you're going to kind of describe how you go about doing that. Yeah, thank you, Carol, for coming out here today. Uh, what we're going to do here is a little demonstration about uh, how we keep the fire where we want to keep it. And for this particular instance, we're going to say that this trail here is our fire break. And off that direction um, is where we're going to try to pretend is our prescribed burn. And we want to keep on that side of the trail. Uh, we'll put down, so we have a little fire break, and then we'll have our, our um, ASV Scout, a proud product of Minnesota, actually, made in Grand Rapids. Uh, and we use these for uh, laying down what we call a wet line. We've got a spray bar on the front of this piece of equipment and it's putting down water as it comes forward. The tracks help push the water down into the grass and uh, 
then following behind this, if this was a real prescribed burn, we'd have somebody with a drip torch lighting this. And the reason we start like this, if you can notice today, uh, that that side over there is into the wind, so when the fire backs into the wind, this flame lengths are lower than when you're uh, having it just running with the wind. So that's what we do to get started. And then once we had a nice 100 feet of black established, then we would light the rest of the prescribed burn. Uh, this, this piece of equipment holds uh, about 200 gallons of water for us. It's a very nice piece of equipment. Uh, the tracks have a really low uh, ground pressure for us, so we're not making a lot of ruts on the prairie. And uh, this is Jason Westholter, our operator here today. All right, so these prescribed burns, now how many do of these do you do a year, per se? What, depending upon the year, we'll do anywhere from 30 to as many as 60. We've had done as many as 60 in one year. All right, and uh, what happens to the plants? I mean, do all the plants, are all the plants killed? No, uh, as you can see right now, most everything's dormant, so there wouldn't be too many effects to that. Uh, we, we just try to remove all this litter. Um, that opens up the soil. The soil is going to get warmer sooner and the grasses are going to grow with more vigor and so will all the wildflowers as well. All right, and how about the wildlife? Uh, for the most part, uh, they're going to move away. Uh, sometimes uh, things don't get out of the way, sometimes some nests get burned, but it's a bit of a trade-off that we have in order to maintain high quality habitat. If we, if we didn't do this so often, uh, the habitat would degrade to the point where the grassland birds wouldn't be here anymore at all. And is there a typical maximum or minimum amount of uh, burning that you do as far as acreage? It, it's all weather dependent and everything lines up. I, we've done as many as 9,000 acres one year and then we've had years where we barely got 3,000 acres done. It just kind of all depends. Uh, sometimes it's a cold and wet, sometimes it, the fire danger is too high and we're not able to do much prescribed burning. So, right. so this is quite an operation as far as a uh, number of people involved and uh, it's not just something that you'll see open burning in the middle of nowhere with no one around? No, uh, and that's, we go through a very extensive planning process and we, we base the number of people and equipment that we have there on what it takes to uh, uh, keep the fire within the area that we decide to have. Uh, that could be for small burns where we're burning up against tilled ground. Uh, that might be four people. I've had as many as 25 people out on a prescribed burn because that's what we need in order to get it done. Steve Schumacher from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service talking about the prescribed burning uh, as we talk about the wildfire season here on TV3. For TV3, I'm Carol McCarthy.